Hi, my name is Paul Trung. Welcome to Winning Chess the Easy Way. In today's segment, we're going to discuss about planning in chess. As you know, chess has three parts, opening, middle game, and end game. And in order to be a better player, you need to learn how to make efficient plans according to the position in all three stages of the game. As a famous saying by a grandmaster, chess is something you don't memorize, chess is something you understand. And now Susan will try to go through step by step and show you how to make plans in all three parts of the game. Susan? Thank you, Paul. Welcome to Winning Chess the Easy Way. As Paul said, we will talk in this segment about planning in chess. Just like in regular life, you have short-term plans and long-term plans, right? In your everyday life, you have errands to run, things to take care of today. And then you have long-term plans, like let's say saving for a house to buy. It's the same way in chess. You have immediate plans to occupy a certain square or attack something. And then you have long-term plans that may range from 8, 10, sometimes 20, 30 moves deep. We will talk about different plans in the opening, which are usually very long-term plans. In the end game, that may be very short-term plans or long-term plans. And the toughest part, the middle game. Sit back, enjoy, and learn. In the first part of this segment, we will talk about opening planning, just like that comes first, right? We start right here in the beginning position. The first example, I will talk about a certain position in the King's Indian defense. Let's see how that position comes. d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. This is the King's Indian defense. e4 d6, knight f3, black castles, bishop e2, both sides are so far developing in a very normal way, e5, which is a standard move in this position, white castles, black plays knight c6, putting more pressure on the d4 square, and white closes the position up with d5, and knight moves to e7. So this is the first position I would like to discuss and share with you what are the plans for both sides. It's a normal position. I cannot say who is better. Maybe white is a little bit better, but it's certainly fight ahead. White's plan is very clear. The idea is to break through with c5, open up the c file, let's say with the bishop coming here and the rook to c1, get a knight here, and try to enter through the c7 square. That may involve, on the way, attacking the pawn on a7. And in case black makes that move, then the b6 square often gets weakened. So what happens is the knight is able to get in here, or sometimes with the help of the queen, the bishop gets to b6 after black weakens that square by playing e6. That is white's general plan in this position. Sometimes white chooses to play b4 to help that, to play c5. Another common plan is to play knight e1, knight d3, to also help the same push with c5. But the general plan is the same. White wants to open the c file, so the rook and maybe the queen and maybe the knight can get through there into black's position. Now, at the same go, Black will not just sit back and wait until white does all of that. Black's plan is to get this knight out of the way, usually through h5 or sometimes e8 or d7, depending on what white's next move is. And then to play f5. That is a typical plan for black. And try to develop an attack on the king's side against white's king. For example, 
one typical way it could go. Knight e1, knight d7, that at the same time that it prepares f7, f5, it also blocks for now the c5 square, knight d3, and then f5. That's a typical plan for black. And for example, in variations when white plays now or later f3, black's idea is to get the knight back, followed by closing the position with f4, followed by g5, preparing an advance with h5 and g4. And black would bring, let's say, the knight over, move the king out of the way, and the bishop here or here, and get maybe the queen also involved. So in nutshells, this is black's plan to develop an attack on the king's side. Sometimes it involves rather putting pressure on the e4 pawn here. And uh, the pawn structure becomes as such. But most of the time, the game develops with this type of pawn structure. So in general, these are the plans in this position. White is playing on the queen side, trying to open a file and gain material on that side of the board, while black is trying to checkmate white. It's a race that right now, according to today's standing of theory, white has a tiny little advantage. But it's an interesting fight. It's a fun game to play with both sides. Our next opening will be the Meran defense. Let's see how that happens. d4, d5, c4, c6. This is the Slav defense. Knight c3, knight f6, e3, e6, knight f3, knight bd7. This is the starting position of the Meran. White plays bishop d3, that's the main move. Black captures. On c4, bishop captures back, and black plays b5, when white bishop retreats usually to d3. This is the starting position that I want to discuss, what the plans are here for both sides. Well, this is one of the most popular openings nowadays. Black is doing pretty comfortable, usually manages to equalize. The main plan here for black is to activate this bishop. He can do that by two means. The most common one is to play a6 either now or first playing bishop b7 and then, and then followed by c5. That is black's plan, to solve the problem of this bishop. Another plan black sometimes tries to do, play bishop d6 and then answer e4 with e5. And then the bishop could also play along the c8, h3 diagonal. White's plan usually involves trying to get ahead in the center. Let's say after a6, e4, c5, and now white can choose whether to play d5 or to play e5. These games usually lead to very sharp tactical games and tense middle game positions. White is trying to play in the center by black is trying to get counterplay from the side. Our next example is the stone wall, the famous stone wall. That starts like this. D4, F5, the Dutch defense. C4, Knight F6, Knight F3, e6, g3, d5, bishop g2, c6, white castles, and bishop d6. This pawn formation of pawn on c6, d5, e6, f5, this is what we call the stone wall pawn formation. Well, black became active, as we can say, by playing f5. However, the price is weakening the e5 square. So usually from white's perspective, white has two plans. One, to try to have a knight 
get in there on e5, preferably after trading the dark squared bishops. Even some people like to trade the bishop here, allowing this trade that ruins white's pawn structure. Others prefer to do this plan, b3 and bishop a3. Of course, <coughs> black can prevent that for now. But then, possibly white can prepare that plan and still try to trade the bishops. Another plan white can do, either in conjunction with fighting for the e5 square, is to try to play f3 and e5 soon. Usually the knights make kind of some funny knight maneuvers. For example, this knight comes here, this knight comes back, this knight comes here, and this knight comes here. That's the ideal setup for the knight to control both the e5 square. For example, of course, this needs to be defended first, but then the idea is to trade the bishop without ruining the pawn structure on the king's side. So they can be traded, and then the knight can get back. And then the dream is to get a knight to e5, and eventually to prepare an f3, e4 breakthrough, of course, with the support of the rook. Well, of course, black doesn't have to sit and wait and allow all of this so easily. And usually black tries to develop an attack. But before we got to that, I want to say the other plan for white. The other plan for white is usually also after trying to fight for the e5 square to try to get a pawn advance on the queen's side, opening the b file, and then coming in. We will see an example like that later on this tape when we talk about middle game plans. So black's plan usually is to simply castle and then often get the queen around here. Even the bishop sometimes gets out this kind of interesting route. And often black starts an attack on the king's side against the white king and just simply try to advance all the pieces. Of course, the knight also comes to help, and the bishop can come, and something of this sort is what black is planning. Objectively speaking, we consider a slight advantage for white in this opening, but it's a steady long-term advantage. However, white needs to be cautious, because the attack can get dangerous if white makes some mistakes. Another plan that black has to his disposal, after castling of course, to develop the bishop with b6 and bishop b7. That's by far less dangerous for white. It's more solid for black, but it's less dangerous for white because the bishop is useful to help the attack on this side of the board or even remaining on c8. After b6 and bishop b7, black is just trying to kind of hang on to the position and play a more normal, solid game like this. So the bottom line for white is white should aim to fight for the weak e5 square and to try to trade the dark squared bishops. 